Hello dudes. Then next one is TCP timer management. In this actually TCP uses four types of four timers. Generally for operation it will use four timers for each operation. Now in that first one is acknowledgement timer. This is acknowledgement timer. As we know that how much time we have to wait for the acknowledgement. This is actually set by uh, this is actually predefined. So first one is acknowledgement timer, and the second one is keep alive timer. Here. Keep alive timer is it is used to keep track of ideal period of TCP connection for ideal period of TCP connection because if you see TCP connections are a bit expensive you need to establish the connection you need to uh, some connection should be uh, specifically allocated to between two systems so this is bit expensive than a other another connection so in this case suppose uh, you, if you are not using this connection uh, it will it will simply uh, disconnect this uh, it will simply is going to uh, disconnect this connection because if you are not going to use it in a specific amount of time after that it simply disconnect this connection so if you see the real time example uh, even if you see in the bank transactions after all logging in into your account online account if you are not using anything after some amount of time it's going to disconnect so this way how much time it needs to be wait if you don't do any operation so this is simply keep alive timer this is this is the one of the timer in tcp for its operation. Then third one is persistent timer. This is actually for silly window syndrome. Why we need uh, this one at uh, Silly window syndrome. Actually, silly window syndrome, as we mentioned, uh, whenever buffer space is zero at the destination site, we are setting the window size as one in the sender window. Okay. After that, we are sending this message. We are sending that one byte of data to the destination continuously. So. We are keep on sending this one. When you are keep on sending, we have to know that after how much amount of time we need to transfer that one byte of data. So that will be tell by this persistent timer. We have to set the persistent timer so that after every suppose if you say if you set as a one second, after every one second, it's going to send that one data packet uh, to the destination. Okay, so this is called persistent time. Then next one is next timer is timed out timer. As we know that timed out timer, this is simply timeout function. After timeout, we are going to retransmit the data simply. So what what way we can discuss is after round trip time. We are still waiting for the acknowledgement. If you don't have any timeout concept, that waiting is infinite. You see here, you transmitted the data. For this data, you are waiting for acknowledgement. So here, if you have a round trip time, we have to get the acknowledgement within this. Even after this, if you are not getting, you are still waiting for the acknowledgement. 
this is going to lead to infinite time but this should not be like this so what we are going to do is we are going to set one more unit of uh, amount of time that is time out after time out even still if you don't get the acknowledgement for this data packet you are going to retransmit this packet once again whether this uh, this is failure of acknowledgement or this is failure of data packet whatever you are going to retransmit the data packet once again after time out so this time out is the some amount of time so that we should say that is time out time out. so altogether these are the four timers we are using in tcp one is a acknowledgement timer peak alive timer for this uh, ideal period of tcp connection how much amount of time tcp connection should be exist and then persistent timer this is especially for silly window syndrome then timed out timer so these are the four timers in tcp connection